of this computer. All right, thanks um, everyone for coming along. Um, we're going to do uh, just work through a bit of post-production stuff after the workshop that we um, did last weekend with Tim Bauer and John Wallace. Um, John's going to run through. Uh, oh, off at Tigers. Yeah, that, I think that must be um, must be Fiona, I'd say. Um, anyway, we're going to run through some post-production stuff of some of the photos that John took. Yeah. Uh, Tim hasn't been able to make it at the moment. He might pop in as we're going along. Um, but anyway, thanks. Thanks, John. If you could um, just run through some post-production. And... I will. I'm going to share my screen. Hopefully this works. Uh, let's have a look. Uh, tell me if it doesn't. How's that? Yep, that's perfect, John. Cool. All right. So, I've Hi, got... John. Hi, Dirk. Hey. How are you going? Yeah, so, you? I'm just got Lightroom here, and I'll just show you how I've uh, how I've sort of laid it out. Um, I like in Lightroom, you can adjust what kind of information you see on on top of your image. So, I pull all my images in just by the import button from their folders on the desktop. And I like to see what the pixel size is. You can see here that's 6200 by 8272, which gives me a pretty idea that it's a big file. And the 3FR, which is the raw file format, which is the Hasselblad format. Uh, there should be some also some, if I go down here, oh no, I think they're all Blad files. Yeah, so we're dealing with all sort of Hasselblad files. I thought there might be some, um, Panasonic files in here too, but they're all Hasselblads. So uh, that's that's the information that I I see. I like to see when I come in. And if you right click on the um, on the little border of your thumbnails, you can then change in view options exactly what you see. So you see here, I've got my top label as megapixels, then I've got my crop dimensions, then my number. And you can change all that to say tell you anything. Like I could look at that and go, all right, I want to see my f-stop. And then uh, when I close that, it'll show me my f-stop um, on the on the uh, images as well. So, um, but what I'll um, what I'll do is we'll just pick a couple of files, and I'll just show you <clears throat> how I would edit them. And I'm gonna pick quite a difficult one to start off with. This is one that I underexposed at the wrong white balance. So you can see that she's, she's really, really blue and she's really, really underexposed. But the beautiful thing, of course, about um, Hasselblad files is I can go to my develop module. And if we just have a look at the histogram here, everything is over here in the dark side of the histogram. So over on the, on the left, as you look at it, that's where the dark side of the force is, over on the left of the histogram. So if, if I look at the develop module here, when we do put our little cursor on the histogram, it'll tell you that the blacks, this is in the blacks, the shadows, uh, the well exposed area is up here in the middle and the highlights are up here, whites and highlights. So now the beautiful thing about the Hasselblad file is I can grab my exposure toggle, my little slider here, and I can just do this. And I will pull out all the detail really nicely. And what I'll also do is her color temperature is obviously completely off. So I will convert that to daylight and then she'll warm up quite nicely, but it's probably a little bit too warm. So I'll just pull the color temperature a little down into the blue and just cool her down a little. And that's probably, I'll do that visually on my monitor because it's pretty much calibrated. And that's given me a sort of, good exposure from if from what it was before from the previous one where it was completely blue and completely underexposed um what i'll also do with her too if we zoom in um we can see she's a little bit shiny because most people have shiny skin uh, unless they've got heaps of makeup on so with her i'll also pull her highlights a little so you can see that shine starting to go away and i'll just pull the whites a little so it's starting to compress her skin tones and pull that shine off. 
So if we go back, it's just taken a little bit of shine off her, um, off her forehead there. Uh, and she's got amazing, these amazing eyes as well. Um, so the first thing I'll sort of have a look at with the eyes, I'll go, oh, okay, that's pretty cool. I'll get my little, up here, I've got my adjustment uh, brush up here. This one here on the far right, as you look at it, this is the adjustment brush. What I'll do is I'll, with my mouse scroller, I'll size my adjustment brush, brush to the size of her eyes and I'll click on both of them. And then I can adjust the intensity of the blue in her eyes. I can get crazy eyes, woohoo! Uh, or I can just go subtly. I tend to like to do everything a little bit subtly. Um, and I'll probably use clarity on them a bit too. And I'll probably use saturation a bit on them too, just to saturate them a little. Um, but what I will make sure is I'll make sure the pupils are always uh, the in the middle here, always nice and black. Um, a bit of contrast wouldn't help on those as well. So you can make the eyes the focus of the picture, which is what they should be because it's a portrait. But we don't want her looking too sort of satanic, having satanic. John, how do you make her sure the pupils stay black? Is it just just the black um, scrolly? Yeah, here. Yeah. We, we can pull this and you can yeah. see in blacks, that'll keep the centers really black and rich. Right. And you can use contrast too. It naturally happens with contrast. So when I've finished, I'll just click on that again and it goes away. Then we have a look and we've, her eyes are now, look, they're quite natural looking, yeah. but they've also got a little bit more intensity. Um, I'll also have a look at her skin. Her skin was pretty... It's amazing for, for, uh, for her age, her, her skin is absolutely fantastic. So, um, but what we, I tend to do is just detexture the skin a little and it just gives a, it just takes out some of the, uh, imperfections and gives a really smooth glow. So I'll like pull minus 20 or a minus 32 on the texture and then I'll punch a little clarity to give it a bit of edge as well, edge sharpness. And that then gives her a nice glowing skin, but it smooths out a few, a little, just a few of the wrinkles. You don't want to, we don't want to turn her into a um, Kim Kardashian because she's not Kim Kardashian, but she's uh, got great skin and we just smooth out some flattering wrinkles there. Just take them out a little bit. Um, with this one too, I'll probably, uh, because there's a lot of red, I'll probably whack a bit of vibrance up on the vibrance slider, but I'll also just desaturate her a little, just a tad, tad, just so she doesn't go too red. Um, but if you look in, uh, there's a really good tool in color. If you look at the color menu, it's got huge saturation and luminance. And what we can actually do is we can click on luminance and there's this little dot. So I can click on that little dot and I can put this anywhere on her skin, for example, hold it down and I can start to pull and you'll notice the slide is moving and adjusting that locally. So I can pull out different colors locally and it will only work on that local area where I've got my slider. So I can change, I'll probably desaturate her reds just in her cheek there a little. Pull that down just a little. So is that just you clicked on that spot that you want to yeah. change and then you go back down to I hold your... No, I hold my mouse, my left mouse button down like yeah. that. It disappears and I drag the mouse up and down oh. on the screen. Oh. Don't have to go back and use the sliders and it'll analyze the color underneath the little slider there and yep. adjust only those sliders applicable to the color under here. Okay. It's a really localized adjustment, which is quite handy. It's really good for pulling out uh, horribleness in skin. Really, really good. So if I went on this really strong red here, held it down and started to adjust that, you'd see it would pull all the red out of the image or I can go the other way and send it really crazy red. Uh, it's really quite handy. You can see on screen it's only really adjusting red and a bit of orange. Mm. So that's really cool. That's a really cool function. And you can do that with saturation. Also change the hue, which will then start shifting those colors into different 
along the color wheel. See, it's changing that red into orange. And is that because you clicked on the feathers itself or were you still No, I'm on still head? on her head, but right. it's changing that red into the orange end. So it takes that uh, red into orange spectrum. So I'm changing, the, I can actually do a false color with that. And luminance is actually the intensity of the color. So again, we've got our little thing highlighted. I'll click on her forehead there and you'll see it darkens or lightens just that color. In, in this one, to, I'll show you too, because if I take, um, let's say I take the background, which is quite dark, Everything's a bit red in here, but if you could, if you've got good color separation, you can start to take out individual colors. Mm. So that's really quite a good. That's a good thing to play with, uh, and that's HSL stands for hue, saturation, and luminance. If we click over to the color side, we don't have that accuracy. We're sort of stuck with the standard color wheel, but we can still play with that as well. Um, the color wheel will enable you to pull out and intensify or de-intensify specific colors like purple, magenta, green, yellow. Um, but in this case, she looks pretty good. Um, I'll just pop up the top again. We've also got camera profiles. Um, I tend to shoot, uh, if I shoot people, I tend to use the Adobe Portrait, which is really flattering on skin tones and it tends to pull most skin tones into line for you. It knocks out that magenta. So the profile gives you the ability to, to work in a color space that's flattering for skin. Um, I've also got a heap of custom profiles that I've also put in the side here. So for example, um, we've got vintage, which gives you all these different vintage looks. Uh, so if I put the slider over the top, you can see it'll preview them. Um, Where do you get those profiles from? Are they just ones that you've are, created? Or? These ones that I've got here, because I've just updated this version of Lightroom, these are the ones that come with Lightroom. So the Adobe Raw ones are the standard Raw ones. So I will use, for example, Portrait, as we just put in. That's the Adobe uh, Raw Portrait Profile. But... Camera matching, for example, if I was shooting a Canon, the Canon profiles would come across, like portrait or landscape would be in here as well for this image. And then artistic, uh, these are all the ones that come with Lightroom down further. So they come bundled with Lightroom. Uh, the black and white ones are actually pretty good. And so if you want to convert to black and white, it's a really good way to do it because they've got filters so you can Man, just... I wish I had known that they were there. That would have saved me hours. Of... Well, there you go. <laughs> or... <laughs> so if, well, I was, I if I was to convert this to black and white, I'd probably use the orange filter because you can see it's really flattering on her skin tones. Maybe even a red. But uh, either way, it's just a really quick conversion. Um, you can, you can be... break it from there, can't you, John? Oh, absolutely. So if I go, all right, orange filter, I can fiddle the intensity up the top, pull that down, or punch it up more orange filter. And that's the same with all the filters as well. Um, but for, the, for this one, there's also modern, and these are pretty fun, these are a bit funky. So they've got like a cinematography kind of feel to them. Um, I don't use them often. You can build your own. Uh, I've got um, on my copy of Lightroom on the PC, I've got about a hundred filters that I've built all my own. Um, we've got some vintage ones too, but in this case, I'll probably leave her with portrait because that's uh, cause it's a portrait. So we'll leave her in Adobe portrait and then we can uh, get out of that. Um, so she's pretty set up to go, I might also do some um, with her too. I'll go up here and this is the gradated filter. So I'll click on that and then I'll go down to the bottom here because I think she's probably a bit hot down here, like light. And I'll run a grad filter up like this. And this is really handy for landscapes as well. 
So I'll drop that grad there and I'll pull her exposure like this and just drop the exposure down a bit. Not that much. Just put a little grad filter on it. And that's probably it. The, the background I'll leave really dark. So any questions about that? Oh, the other thing is lens corrections. They're really handy. Um, you can see when I've clicked those, it'll automatically correct for any issues with the lens. So particularly, um, I was using the Hasselblad um, 1.9, which is a pretty, uh, it's a pretty open lens and I was shooting it at 4.5. So it does need a little bit of correction. So it'll, it'll stop distorting and vignetting um, if you, and you'll automatically detect what lens is on just by clicking these two buttons as well. So it'll get rid of any vignetting automatically for you. And it's usually pretty good too. Mm -hmm. um, so if you wanted to change just the background, would you go back and use just that adjustment button at the top that you were using for her eyes? Um, you could, you could just go like this uh, and you could paint in the adjustments. For example, I could just do this and this, this will put a mask on. Okay. So then I could, change that using the slider and I could lighten that up or I could just do an overall in, uh, black, a push in the blacks, which will lighten up that black background nicely. And I could then get it to a point where I wanted to keep it that way. And then I could go back into my um, grad filter here, highlight it and then pull that foreground back down again. Mm. Um, either way, in Photoshop, you could mask it. In Lightroom, you can't. But I, I think the, the, the idea is to avoid going to uh, Photoshop as much as possible. Uh, because Photoshop sucks and it's too comfortable. It's too complicated. Um, the other thing is uh, with medium format, there's often a lot of dust on the sensor. So this little tool here, I don't know if you'd use that. That'll get rid of any dust. I'm lucky. I think I cleaned the sensor before I shot, actually. I did, so there's no dust, but I can show you how to do dust later. The other thing on portraits, which is really handy, is to knock some noise out. Um, so if we look in the detail, the detail department here, when we're doing sharpening, I don't particularly need to do much sharpening on these files because the Vlad lenses are critically sharp. But what we can do is we can drop out, drop out some noise, maybe put a 40 noise reduction and also pull some color noise. And what that'll do is that'll also smooth out the skin tones for you. So you can see plenty of detail there, but if I, pull some noise reduction in there. It just slight, takes out any of that crunchiness. I don't know if you can see it on the screen. If I go back to here, you can see particularly down here, there's small, few small hairs, smooth for wrinkles and, and pores. If I run noise reduction on that, it just runs, just blurs them up a little really nicely, uh, which is quite nice. And same with the color. So it just gives a nice flattering skin tone. All right, where else? And I work my way down this side of the screen too. So I might also want to whack a bit of a vignette in. And you can see, if I go like that, it's really heavy. But if you can see a, just a touch of vignette, it just focus, focuses on the subject matter. It's quite nice as well. Um, so any questions so far? No, I think that's that's good. I think I just didn't know how to use the adjustment stuff, all the rest of the stuff. I think that's I pretty, yep. yeah, knew. Okay, didn't so, know that those profile, um, profiles were there. That's going to be handy. Yeah, so they're all up in profile here. Mm. So you've got to drop down anyway. But if you go browse, the same menu comes up. Okay. It's like they're double, it's a, like a double menu. Or you can click here. And they just come up straight away. Um, white balance, 
um, I tend to, if I'm shooting under uh, flash, I tend to put it under flash. But this was shot under LED, which is a little bit... Um, a little bit different. Um, so I tend to work it on daylight and then tweak tweak the color, tweak the uh, white balance using a slider and I tend to run a little cool I don't tend to run a, I don't go hot I and mean, you can pull out the magenta too I mean this image is pretty good for magenta um, the other black and white of course is if you run it this way using the uh, black and white tab mm. at the moment it's got an orange filter so I'll just take that back to portrait and we'll just change that to normal black and white. Black and white 01. And this mix thing here will change the mix based on the underlying color. So you can see here I'm tweaking the reds. And if I pull, uh, if I lighten all the reds, it's like it's shot on infrared film. And if I darken them, because this is a mainly red picture, it'll send the picture dark. But for skin tones, it's usually the orange that you can fiddle, which will smooth out the skin tones for you nicely in black and white. And a bit of magenta. But orange is the one that really governs skin tones in black and white. That's sort of like the old film way of using a filter, isn't it? Isn't it? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, the other thing for, we can do for black and white is also split toning, uh, where we tone highlights by selecting a tone color. So I might want to select red. No, maybe not, it's a bit too hardcore. Bit of sepia tone there. Um, and then I can change the hue with the slider and I can change the saturation. I don't want to oversaturate sepia tone. That'll tone the highlights and then I can pick a split tone blue in the shadows. There's a lot of shadows. So we just pull that down and that'll give you a nice split toning effect. You can see the shadows are nice and cool but her skin tone still got that warm sepia look to it, which gives it that antique photo look as well. Uh, so split toning is really quite, really quite nice. Um, so that's her. So if I go back to the library now, you can see, uh, and I just zoom in, you can see that's the shot after it and the difference it sort of makes. It's extremely underexposed. You can see this, but after we've played with it a bit, you've got a really nice curve with detail everywhere. And that's, uh, that's one of the benefits of medium format as well. Um, I might sort of just do a little dirky picture here too. So medium format, what do you actually mean by that? Okay, so medium format, um, the sensor size, oh, yeah. the physical size, like uh, on a 35 mil sensor, um, it's uh, the size of a 35 mil piece of film, whereas a medium format sensor is probably twice as big right. physically in size, not so much in megapixels, although there are some big ones. But if you look here, this is a 50 million pixel image. Um, and if you had a Canon 5 DSR, it would tell you the same pixel count, sort of. Um, but the sensor is physically big, which means it has a lot less noise and a lot less, it records a lot more detail in, in the blacks and the highlights. You'll also find that with some of the Sony cameras too. Uh, the Sony sensors naturally do that as well in 35 mil. Um, but medium format is the uh, is the um, that's its that's its party trick is the ability yeah. to record detail in blacks and highlights, whereas thirty five mil won't do that. Um, if I look at the Dirk picture, for example, and I go into his face, sorry Dirk, um, you'll see the highlights here. 
for, in a 35 mil image, we wouldn't necessarily be able to grab the highlights and start pulling all that detail back. And you can see the detail starting to appear right here, uh, which means we haven't lost it. And I can also pull back the whites. Uh, normally, what would happen when you did that in 35 mil, this would just be, the highlights would just be a noisy bunch of nothing. But with medium format, th that has the ability to pull those back really nicely. The, the camera that I've got is a uh, Canon, um, what is it? Oh, it's at my feet, hang on. I was on a down D, now it's a Canon. What do we got? 80D. Oh yeah, they're so nice. That's a, so that's a that's not a medium format. That's a 35 no, mil. That's, that's 35 mil. Yeah. So just hang on for a second. I'll show you. I'll go get a medium format. It's actually an APS-C sensor. That one. Okay. So a little bit smaller than 35 mil. Okay. But you can still you can still do the same things as what you're doing, what John's doing on Lightroom. Yeah, a lot more latitude so that, once you go to medium. <laughs> so that might be the frustration again that I'm having with looking at other people's cam uh, shots and going, "How did they get that? Why isn't mine doing that?" <laughs> okay, now, that. There you go. Uh, that's medium format. Yeah. So that's the sensor there, and the ADD is APS-C, which is the same as this. Uh, NEX here. So if we go, if we look at whoa, those yeah, okay. two, yeah, that's the size difference. Yeah, so okay. this is your one, and this is medium format. Yeah. So there's a big, big size difference, um, and the size gives better sensitivity, a wider tonal range. Hang on, let's just go, and. Um, Gives you the ability to really, uh, actually gives you the ability to make some really big errors, uh, <laughs> which I tend to do. Um, but if if I look at another, I'll show you another picture where this is really, really, really evident. I'll just go to, I'll just go to one of the landscapes where I hit. Okay, yeah. So here is. Uh, here is, where are they? Uh, not that, not that, not that, oh yeah. Um, let's do this Opera House one. So if I go to develop, um, even if I just, uh, in, in this case, in Lightroom, there's a little uh, button a handy little button called dehaze. Yeah. And if you, uh, you've probably used this for clouds, but we can start to pull more and more detail, more and more detail, more and more detail. And then we can keep going until we get right to the top. But I can also go up here, which looks like there's just white and no detail at all. But I can, let me do that. And then let me do that. Oh, yeah. Okay. And then there's heaps of detail still, just still left in there. In fact, I, there's clouds everywhere. But um, if you look at um, when you reset the settings, you probably wouldn't, you'd probably say, oh my God, I've blown out all these highlights. But yeah. medium format, you can pull back really, really easily. Even with things like just the white slider and the highlight slider, we can start to pull back. And then uh, if you look at, Take the, oh, what am I, what am I, where am I? Yeah, hang on. We take the uh, exposure slider down. You can see where there's still detail in the, heaps of detail in the, in the sky. Which I think an ADD being a, a really good camera, but the sensor itself is a little constrained. Yeah. Um, the other thing you can also see is in, in the blacks. So, in 35 mil, you probably would start to get some noise and horribleness in there. But if I whack this slider up, you can see I'm starting to open up detail with no noise whatsoever until I actually run out of slider. Yeah. Um, and I can still keep going. 
and we start to see some noise when there's maybe three or four stops of overexposure in the blacks. So that's the that's the benefit of um, medium format, and for some 35 mils as well, like some of the Sony sensors in 35 mil, you can do that to some extent as well. Um, particularly cameras like the A7 Mark III um, and also the D850. The D850 Nikon has a really good sensor for that as well. Canons are good, but they're not quite as good. You've got to get your exposure right on a Canon. Um, they don't have that latitude of the Sony sensors. That's just the nature of them. Um, do you want to go through and do some edits on those? Yeah. Do you want to? I'll show you what I I. I do, I'll pick one that everyone knows. So this Falls Creek one, which was one in the exhibition, this is actually shot on the Panasonic, the S1R. And for this one, um, I'm a bit of a, a cloud fanatic. Um, and you can see there's, there's the, um, there's, I'll just reset all of them. So this is, this, this is out of the camera. This is what I see out of the camera. Um, so straight away, I'll get my grad, I'll drag my grad down here and I'll get my clouds and I'll just go, yeah, clouds. And you can see I've minus, minus highlights, I've minus all the white and I've pulled exposure. And what I'll also do here is I'll run dehaze on that and really start to really start to crank up the clouds. So they're like ominous, like there's a massive storm coming. And I might so are you, John, when you see a photo like that, are you wanting to use what you've taken but create an art piece rather yeah. than present yeah. what was actually there? Absolutely. Yeah. This is what I see in my head, but yeah. what is actually there is um, the original. That is something totally different, and also um, it also it, this is where your create creativity comes. I'm not changing anything. I'm just changing the exposure. This is what we would have done in the dark room back in the day anyway. Yeah. Um, we would have dodged and burnt. And then I'll also down here, this is now, this is now a bit too dark. So I'll grab my brush here, this one, my local adjustment brush, and I'll just do a wave through here just with my mouse. And I'll just start pinging the exposure in little, little increments just so I can see those trees start to come up. Uh, and then I'll start to pull highlights with the highlight slider and the highlights will start to come up and I'll start to pull some whites and some whites. You'll see how it's starting to glow. Mm. You're starting to get a beautiful glow on the highlights. Uh, and I might also, I probably will leave the blacks and I'll come back down here. And I'll do some more down here and I'll just click on the bits that I like because we can also adjust, we can always adjust them later so is it just because you're pressing on that adjustment button that you're clicking on the mouse again and it yep. brings up other okay it'll add the adjustments for you but yep. then we can go back and then we can fiddle it i can go up and down because it's like a layer now no wonder i've looked at photos and gone how the hell did they get that picture i've never seen the sky look like that and the light on that particular space like there you go that's what they've done <laughs> yeah uh, he's painting in with the adjustment brush and yeah, yeah okay local, localized adjustments i can also uh if i don't want to do adjustment brush i can put a grad up as well up here from below and i can then fiddle the exposure using a grad which gives me a nice even look okay um if so i want to have more than one grad like i can one have hundreds oh, oh okay. yeah yeah, and to find them again, you just click on the grad tool and then you go looking, the, do, the dots come up. So there's the top uh, grad. Yeah. So you just put your tool on top. It shows you exactly what it's doing with the red. So if I, oh, there's my mask. Okay. And then I've got my other one here that's currently active. That and sky so, looks bloody awesome. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's easy to, it's really easy to do too. Um, and I love a dramatic sky. I've got a few really cool sky photos now that I'm going to go back and re-edit because now I know how to do that. That'll look yeah. different to what I've been able to do. I'll also probably with this one add some overall clarity as well. Just just as you can see it's starting to really then pull.
pull out those highlights as well. Um, and again, I'll go down the bottom and I'll just put in my lens adjustment. So I shot this on the Sigma 35 f 1.2 um, and uh, on the, and it's now adjusted it a little bit down here as well and just corrected for that lens. Um, this I shot at uh, ISO 100. So it has, it's got no kind of noise, but I'd probably add a little bit of sharpening for printing. Um, so pull the sharpening slider, pull a little bit, a bit of noise reduction, and that's pretty much ready to print. Um, the only thing we've got to watch is here. So if I zoom in, and if you over sharpen that, you'll start to see, I don't know if you can see it, start to see it separating along here, along yeah. the lines. This is a problem. Uh, so we've got to avoid when we sharpen, getting that edge separation because it'll come, a, it'll come across on the printing. And particularly when you JPEG it, it'll be really prominent when you JPEG it. So any of these horizon lines, we've got to try and avoid the, the, that fringing of over sharpening. Having said that, this is quite a big file, so it will take a lot of sharpening. The bigger the file, the more sharpening you can put on it. Um, so this is again a 47 megapixel file, but I think I shot it um, in the multi-shot mode, so I think it's a 200 megapixel now, but I, I, I'm not, I'm not sure. So that's a dramatic sky, and the, here's the sky pretty much beforehand. This is just about uh, maybe 20 degrees further around to the right from the car park at Falls Creek. So if that, that to that, and it, you can do it really quickly too. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. But we've, we, all I do is I just remember that um, I'd like to see some detail in the foreground and you don't want to go in too contrasty, but the sky, you can let do its do its thing. Mm -hmm. um, another one similar is this one. No, it's a tip. This one. This one is a, um, that has the adjustments on it. This is another Hasselblad file. Um, and this is a good one to show. That's why it's taking so long to load. Because they're, they're a little big. So what I'll do is I'll just go, uh, okay, setting, reset all settings. And that's what I, that's what the original, that's what the camera saw. Um, and you can see there's dust hmm. on the sensor, that sensor dust. So I'll grab my dust tool and I'll just go click and then Which I'll get rid of it. Which is your dust tool? This one here. Right. Yeah. And I'll just click on my little dust spots and they'll just go away. So that's, that's all good. And then again, I'll get my grad and I'll drag my grad down and we'll definitely do some dehaze on this guy. And when you start to dehaze, you'll start to see more dust appear. So oh, yeah. up here, there's another one that was hiding. But also when you're doing dust tool, down here there's visualized spots. If you click on that, you can see, oh, I've got a spot here, so I can go do that. Oh, I've got another one there. Uh, and then that'll show you all the little hidden ones that you can't see. Um, and then when I untick it, they're all done. Um, what I also did with this one is again, I pulled up another grad up from below and I ran this with a bit of texture and a bit of clarity. And I'll just put these in the middle. But then I said, oh yeah, it's a bit dark down below. So I just did a broad adjustment brush through the middle like that and pulled my, started to pull my exposure to get a little bit of glow and then a little bit of contrast and then a bit more clarity through there just to get that happening and then a bit more texture as well. Uh, I've also added a few more, pull the whites a little as well. That's, so really that's, cool. that's not quite as good as my original one, but uh, there you go. Lucky I saved it. Uh, but again, we can see by highlighting when we've got our tool clicks, because I'm still in the adjustment brush, we just put our cursor over and then it will then show us exactly what we're adjusting. 
Um, and then I'll turn that off. And in this case, for, for landscape, again, I'll click my um, adjustment for the lens. I'll probably go to Adobe Landscape, which gives some more of uh, some richer colors. You can see that just pinged up slightly richer from Adobe Color. It's a bit flat. Adobe Landscape is nice and rich. And the blue, I really like the blues in this image as well. And they come out when you start to do that dehaze. So I'd probably also now whack a overall clarity along that. But again, just watching for the trees for any fringing. So if you pull too much clarity, you'll start to get fringing, although this is holding nicely. Um, and I'd probably sharpen that overall a little as well. Again, watching for any fringing in the trees. Um, just a little bit of noise reduction too. That's always good because it gives a nice smooth rendering of, the, of noise. So yeah, that was, uh, That's that really was cool. the drought breaking uh, in Gungarlan outside Canberra. Um, so the other one, um, I'll, I'll do some buildings too, because they're pretty interesting. Um, in Lightroom, uh, if we go into the develop module again, you'll notice buildings are always seem to be falling over. You see they converge, the verticals converge. Everything looks a bit sort of topply overy. Um, I don't know whether you guys have used the um, transform no. function. It's really cool. Um, let me just reset the image. So I reset all settings. There we go. So we're a bit tumbly overly. So I can change my verticals. This grid will turn up and I can pull this slider and adjust for the verticals. And what I'll do is I'll line the edge of a building up on one of the lines. Uh, and then I'll click constrain crop. And then I'll, what I'll try to do is rotate a little to straighten her up. So for example, my light poles really need to be a bit straight. Uh, then I'll go back and do a bit more fiddling. Like this. Uh, you can do an auto though. Lightroom does a pretty good job when you click on auto of doing it for you. Um, or you, you can do that guided one as well, which is what I was just doing. But auto, when you click on auto, it'll usually straighten things up quite nicely for you. Um, so that's handy, but it does mean that when you shoot, you've got to shoot back a little because you've got to give mm. Lightroom enough room down below to do that adjustment for you. So they're high, but that's for high buildings. Also, the good thing about buildings is that texture, buildings love texture because they've got all these like, like uh, concrete and all this kind of textural stuff on there. So texture is brilliant for buildings. Um, you can see there if, I, if I'm just at zero, if I pull that right, to, it can go right to 100. And they also love a bit of clarity. Uh, Tim likes a lot of clarity. He's a clarity guy. So I can pull a clarity slider and a texture slider, which will give me some beautiful texture and, and really, um, really make the buildings pop. Um, also with this kind of, with buildings and, uh, buildings and cityscapes, I'll tend to open up the shadows to get more detail. In this case, I'd probably leave the sky where it is because you're not, you're not going to get much out of that, but I'll make it slightly flatter and I'll pull the highlights a bit as well. Um, and you can see my curve starting to change and compress a little. I'll pull my whites a little, just so I've got almost a HDR kind of look. And I'll open up my, I'll pull my blacks just a little and that'll be my, um, I tend to flatten the cityscapes out. So they're nice, so they're, they're almost rendered like drawings. Um, the other one, I'll do another landscape. This one was, um, this one was quite difficult because there was a lot of, um, a lot of adjustments, local adjustments done on this. Also it's done in Lightroom. I, like I said, I avoid, um, I avoid Photoshop like the plague. There's the original file. 
Wow, um, that's so different. Yeah, it's really flat. Like it's really flat. Um, so again, what I did here, grad filter is your friend. You just pull it and you line it up with the, see how the, I'm lining these lines up with that part of the landscape. Yep. So that's a key part of the landscape. So you don't want that going too dark. So I'll do, do a bit of a sideways sideways thing on that. And again, I'll start running my dehaze up. And then I'll start to pull it. And I'll probably pull that down by grabbing, grabbing a bit like that. Uh, I might just pull my white slider up, and my highlights back to normal as well. We might leave a exposure. Probably a bit too much dehaze. There we go. Um, and there's one. And then I'll run again an opposite grad from the opposite corner up here. Yep. Like that. And this I will tweak exposure to light to darken it. Like that. And then again, I'll get my local adjustment brush. And I'll probably on your mouse, you can scroll the size. So if you've got a wheel on your mouse, you can do this. So I'll, I, I'll, I adjust that and I'll just run a little shaft of light through the middle and I'll start to up that exposure. Then I can go back and I can go, oh yeah, well, I need a bit more. So I click on my grad again and then I'll start pulling that. Then I'll find my other one here. Then I'll start pulling that. And I'll start to work that until I get a pool of light sitting where I want it. And that's probably about it. Um, and then I'll go back to my overall and then I'll start cranking my clarity. And you see how that just starts to pull out that glowing bit right in the middle here. And I'll add a bit more texture. And I'll also in this case, open my shadows up a little. And then I'll go here and you can see I've got my dust now and I'll get rid of my dust. And again, not as good as the original, but close. Wow, that gives me uh, quite a lot of um, confidence now that I can actually fix up some of my photos. <laughs> well, you can take ordinary and again, this one from Tasmania is um, uh, what I call, uh, this is, if I go to develop, this is Penguin Rocks in Tasmania. Um, oh, develop, develop. There we go. That's, wow. with all, that's with all its crap, uh, crap, all its stuff on it. And this is just the standard. It's sort of boring, right? And again... Even a quick dehaze starts to make some interesting things happen. And what I did with this one is I went into the HSL and went into luminance, click this button, and I just started pinging greens and just making the greens glow mm. and just going over, pulling the greens out uh, of, the, of the surf in luminance. And then I went and did the same with a bit of saturation and just saturated them a bit as well. Oop, too far. You don't want to get too much. And then um, again, I ran a grad down from the top. Because this also means that you don't need to use uh, grad filters as well. Uh, you can, but uh, it's still a much better, it's much easier in my opinion particularly with digital files now, is just to use a grad filters in Photoshop. Oh, in no Lightroom. Uh, we don't need that, that one. And pull them back. And I'll just fiddle the... Because I like a bit of... The, the foreground's quite nice, actually. Uh, and again, I do Adobe Landscape, which rich in, makes it a bit richer. And away you go. What you could also do with this one is you could probably make the sand... Uh, pull the sand up a bit with luminance just to make that glow a little. And that leaves it, that leaves it very phallic, this rock. Wow. Penguin <laughs> rocks. Um, yeah. So that's like two minutes. 
Yeah, that's impressive. It changes the whole, uh, like, whole feel of the photo. Yeah, look, the subject matter here is this this rock here and this whole sort of thing leads you out to sea into the stormy clouds. Um, so you've got a bottom left up through top right kind of composition, which is quite nice. You've got your eye sort of stays in the picture and then runs around up here, which is which is nice. Yeah. That's Tasmania. You can't get a bad shot in Tasmania, I've got to say. No, it's like uh, South... Uh... South Island of New Zealand, it's pretty similar. Yeah, you can't go wrong. Um, I'll just show you a quick portrait too. Um, this is a, a shot at um, Tim's studio. He's an actor. Um, and it was shot, this is straight out of the camera, out of the Panasonic. So in this case, the Panasonic has a sensor that has a lot of exposure latitude, a bit like the medium formats. So again, I can, I will pull him up. That's two and a half stops. I will probably, I keep the same ratio. So I lock the ratio as what's shot, shot in the camera and I'll pull the crop down and center him up. And I was, I asked him to be a bit like a bit evil. Um, and with, with guys, clarity again, you can clarity up guys because it's amazing and their skin gets all rough and you can whack a bit of texture on them. Um, also, I will then whack Adobe Portrait profile and he's pretty much ready to go. And that was um, done just with the light from a garage door. There's no, there's no uh, studio light in there whatsoever. Yeah. So you can do that at home if you've got uh, a window or a doorway or a garage, that's just daylight. Cause I, that shot at like 400 ISO and most cameras now can shoot quite happily at 400 ISO, no problem. Um, yeah. I would probably also with him uh, run a bit of a noise reduction just to smooth out the grain in the background, particularly you can see it's taken out that grain in the background, that noise in the background quite nicely. So if I go like this, if you look at that background, it gets a bit, crunchy but if i run a like a halfway noise reduction it just smooths it out beautifully yeah that's cool um and he again when you see pictures like this you can he converts really nicely to black and white uh, match a nice black and white shot as well mm. um but the landscape stuff is all about if we go back to these guys again it's all about this one here, the grad, the grad is your big friend. Um, once you've learned to learn to master the grad, you've got no problems whatsoever. Uh, and it's really easy, really easy. You can get right into fine adjustments and changing all that kind of stuff with the grads as well. But uh, uh, I reckon D Hayes, uh, clarity and texture, uh, the three that you need and the grad filter. That's cool. That's the bit I've been missing on my, um, I didn't know how to use that part. So cool. that'll be the bit that I'll uh, play with now. Nice. Um, so any questions? Um, I think probably just for me, the, the parts where there's something wrong in a photo, um, like okay. if you go back to the original photo of the, you were doing of um, Tanya, and when you zoomed in on her eyes, there was a bit of mascara in the wrong spot. Yep. Um, how do you properly get rid of stuff I'll like that? that? That's an easy one. So let's go to the library and let's find her. Um, oh, where is she? Sex head. Okay. So let's just, uh, I'll just uh, go to develop. Turn it back to colour, uh, and we'll go into the eyes here. Oh. My screen's only showing a grey line across it. It's not. Showing oh, is it? it? Yeah. Oh, hang on. Let me start again. Ah, there we go. I shared the wrong thing. 
There you go. Yep. <laughs> there you go. Uh, so this one, for example, yep. that bit. this is where your spot tool is your friend. Right. So, and you get your wheel. Oh, okay. Make it. Yeah. Yeah. And you just get it in there and you just go. Eh. And once it thinks about it, there it is gone. Same here. We've got another one here. Gone. So if I get rid of the spot tool now, that's disappeared. Righto. Yeah. Cool. Just treat, treat it like dust. Yeah. And also with the spot tool, you can feather it. So if you slide this up and then you'll see, uh, I'll just make it bigger so you can get an idea. It'll show you where it's feathering. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And that's quite handy if you just want to blend it into the side of things a bit more. Yeah. But the spot tool is the makeup retoucher. Yeah. Yeah. The little dot that's next to that spot tool. Red yeah, eye. That, yeah. Okay. Yep. What's that? Red eye is if you've got red eye, you just whack it over the eye in question and it will automatically get rid of it. Right. Yeah. Not many people have red eye nowadays. Yeah. Uh, just because the nature of flash is a lot better. Um, cool. So your local adjustment brush is here. Spot is here. Crop. Um, I forget what this one. What's this one? This is the masking. I never use this one. Yeah, that's that's to add a mask. We can paint in a mask with that fellow. Yeah. Um, and yeah, and cropping. Yeah. Cool. It's funny. I never use this one, or I never use that one. Yeah. Um. Anything else? I don't think so. That'll give me plenty to play with. So I was trying to um, uh, mess around with the photos I took last weekend or whenever it was. I haven't had a chance to till today. Yeah. Um, so it'll give me more to mess around with now. Good. The other thing, oh, just the other, one more thing with spot. So we can also drag the spot. You don't have to just touch it. You can just drag it and it will then uh, look at a similar area. But also if you're not happy with that, we can then drag that area around and it will move it until see now we're visually we can see that we've gotten rid of that blemish yeah we can then drop it and we're good to go okay That's great is that a newer tool in lightroom is it john no nah, it's been there forever man oh has it there you go yeah i've been using uh -huh. to do all that. <laughs> yeah don't use photoshop it sucks <laughs> <laughs> i'm glad i'm so glad that i've sat here and done this because uh yeah it's those bits that i haven't been able to do that i can go right now I know what to do with that. Yeah. All right. Um, um, thanks, John. That was bloody awesome. Yeah, no worries. Thank you, John. No worries. And um, I'll just stop this. There we are. Um, so we can do it. Uh, we can do it live and in person with Charlie too. Yeah, we're going to have a workshop in a couple of weeks with Charlie and John. We go out the weird. This post production and stuff like that, but I'll announce all that uh, soon. All right. Yeah. Awesome. So I'll, I'll see you later. Uh, are you going to kick me off now? Yeah. I am. Thanks for coming along, Fiona and Michael. Oh, thank you. No worries. Thanks. That was amazing. It'll help me heaps. And Dirk, if you want to share those file, the file, files that we worked on before, I've sent you a link. Uh, yep, go cool, to the Dropbox. Yeah, yeah. So you can just hand out the files. That's no problem. Yeah, cool. Thank you. And I'll rip, we'll post this on Facebook. Uh, sorry, on YouTube. A few people asked if we could yeah. do this one. They couldn't make it. So um, we'll do that. Awesome. Thanks. Fantastic. All right, guys. Thank, Thank you. you. See you. Bye. See ya.